What's up everyone, CJ from On The Grow here, and today what I'm gonna be doing is playing with reusable grow mediums. Now this is something that we did in the past with a dehydrator mat, which is technically not really that great at, for using as a reusable grow medium for the main reason that uh, it's a silicone coating, basically like a cotton yarn. And wherever you cut it on the sides, what happens is you can get a little bit of bacteria buildup and stuff like that. So you just have to be extra vigilant about sanitizing that. So what I wanted to do is I had some other things kind of laying around our shop and our grow space. And I wanted to test out some more uh, dependable, I guess you could say, me mediums for testing out as a reusable grow medium. So right here I have basically like a, a very basic uh, polypropylene uh, kind of net in a sense. This is something that people use for filters. I mean, just all kinds of different stuff. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be playing around, cutting out some of this and putting it into a 1020 and seeing how it grows some microgreens. Now I will say that the slots are quite small, which is beneficial for some of our larger crops, but if the mesh gets too small, it can actually choke out the roots. I don't think that this is too small, so I think this, this will work well. Something else that I've tested out off camera that I've been really enjoying is 304 grade stainless steel, which is the same kind of stainless steel you use for uh, basically anything kitchen appliance wise, commercial kitchen, stuff like that. It's used in a lot of uh, brewing equipment, uh, uh, just kind of all kinds of really good stuff that needs high corrosion resistance and uh, is able to be sanitized quite well. So we're gonna use some of this. This is a new little pack I got. So we're gonna open these up and you'll notice they don't fit these trays. So what I need to do is I'm gonna get me a little marker and I'm gonna mark out the size of the tray on this. And I'm gonna get it cut out so that it actually fits into this tray. So I'll see you guys in just a second once I've kind of cut this out to shape. See if it fits that's the main thing all right so we do fit that's what we are looking for so it's a little bit off the edge but that's all right i'm going to be seating mostly in the middle anyway so i'm not really too worried about those edges so we got our stainless steel grow medium here and our polypropylene so now like i said see how this thing is this doesn't really want to sit down i can't really kind of force it in shape like i can that stainless steel i will try to bend against this though and see if i can Hopefully get this crease out just a little bit. So what I like to do to get creases, you just kind of work it in a whole bunch of different directions and hope that that tension will kind of stick. All right, cool. Yeah, that's it's pretty much a lot better than it was. And now same thing with the uh, stainless steel. See how right now it's like, it's making this big U shape. So what's gonna happen is as soon as I go to uh, seed this, it's gonna push all the seeds off in opposite directions. And also as they grow, some will have the roots touching water, whereas some will have to really reach down their roots to get down there. So I need to try to really work this into a much more flat shape. So I'm gonna take my time here and just kind of pay attention to any, you see how, how you can see a mound right here? I'm gonna try to find those mounds and I'm gonna try to work them out. So I'm just gonna take my fingers and I'm just pushing against my palm a little bit. And again, I would suggest wearing gloves because you can see like these little guys sticking out from the edge they will snare your fingers a little bit. So you just need to be really careful about that. 346 minutes later. We will just kind of leave it in this state. So I think that's pretty even with this one because this plastic doesn't sit perfectly flat either. So we will just have them both be kind of even in that regard. All right, so now we need to test out some kind of crop on this. Now that we have our two uh, reasonable grow mediums on here. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is I am gonna be using uh, these slotted mesh trays. This is so that I can allow more of the roots to get down into this bottom water area. Uh, I do not prefer to use the, yeah, like, like these. Uh, the reason is, is that the roots just won't have the ability to really penetrate as well on these slotted trays as much as they will on the mesh trays, which is why these are our favorite to use. Just kind of overall, I think those mesh ones are our favorites. Now that I've explained that, let's get some crop. So what I'm gonna be using is something that grows aggressive to start off this test. I'm gonna be using some radish. This is Long Scarlet Cincinnati, and we got this one from True Leaf Market. I like me some radish because they are dependable, strong growers. And we should probably be using about, let's try about 15 grams per tray. 15, bam, there we go. 15 grams of seed of that Long Scarlet Cincinnati. So whenever you're seeding directly on a reasonable grow medium, I like to give it a light mist. And what happens is those little water droplets will actually kind of grab those seeds 
because if I just drop it straight on, I mean, here, I'll show you a little example. They're just gonna bounce. So it doesn't really land that well where I want them to land. So by giving this a nice light mist, it'll help those seeds kind of stick where I want them to stick. All right, we'll start with our stainless steel one over here. Okay, now my job here is just to kind of spread these out as even as possible. Now I think we might take this up to 20 grams now that I'm looking at this. Yeah, let's jump this up to 20. So I'm gonna add another 10 grams to this guy. We're not really gonna be comparing this weight to weight. What we're just gonna be doing is really just focusing on how these mediums handle the uh, crop. So the actual seed density isn't so important. Bam, so I went a little bit over, that's all right. So we're doing about 25 grams per tray. AC keeps kicking on and off. All right. There we go. That's looking like a lot better density to me. So you notice one of the challenges with uh, these kind of mediums is the seeds just kind of go wherever they kind of want to go versus if I was kind of dropping this on a soil, there's a lot more stuff there to stop them where I want them to stop. And especially the, the ripples, you can tell there's a little low spot right here. You can see my density gets uh, a lot higher in those low spots because all the seeds kind of gravitate towards it due to gravity. All right, now same game with this one. So this one's got some interesting little high spots. I'll try to take my time so that these don't roll too bad. One thing I will say, it's really nice to be able to see how you're seeding and your seeding density and everything with these uh, reusable grow mediums because it's just super transparent. However, you can see this high spot is forcing all my seeds off of it. All right, so now I have these uh, two reasonable grow mediums seeded and we begin the germination process. Now, I will say that this is the hardest part about reasonable grow mediums. Whenever you're working with something like a soil, these soils will actually retain a lot of that water and it'll help the seeds germinate, whereas these mediums, like the plastic and the steel, they're made to be non-porous, so they don't hold any water. So your water is gonna stagnate at the bottom of the tray or along the sides or something like that. So one of the biggest challenges with reusable grow mediums is keeping the trays humid and keeping them moist without doing overly so, because if you keep it too wet, you're gonna create lots of issues around uh, mold and fungus and stuff like that. So it's really finding this fine line with reusable grow mediums. So what we wanna do is we wanna get these watered, but not too watered. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin this process. I'm gonna start from far away with a light mist. Make sure all my seeds are kind of grabbing on. Nothing's gonna jump around on me. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of paying attention to the medium. I can see how much water's collecting on it, as well as I'm watching the uh, seed uh, shells change color too. So I'm noticing them going from a lighter color to a darker color, which is letting me know how much water I'm putting into this tray. Now again, I wanna find a good line here. So this is starting to look pretty healthy right here for amount of water. I don't want any water pooling or anything like that. And I feel like this one's good. Now let's give it a little bit more to this one. All right, so now both of these are nice and moist. I can see a good amount of water all over my seed holes and the medium itself has a good amount of water and I'm seeing a nice amount of moisture within the tray itself. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna trap all that moisture in. I'm gonna do that by putting on a top tray. I'm gonna put this top tray on there and what this is gonna do is it's gonna apply pressure, number one, to the seeds to keep them trapped, but also it's gonna choke out most of that airflow so that a lot of this humidity is not leaving this tray. I'm gonna get a little bit of weight on top, that way I can really hold these things down. And I'm gonna do that by getting two simple little uh, five pound bricks. I'm just gonna set those right in the middle. Bam, so now we are germinating for both of these reusable grow mediums. I'm gonna come back out tonight. I'm gonna give it a little bit more water like I just did. And uh, if there's any water still sitting in the bottom, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain that out because we don't want any stagnant water. Stagnant water starts to smell really bad really quick, so we do not want that. We wanna make sure that we're giving it enough water but not again so much that it's creating like pooling or stagnant water. Let me get this onto a shelf for some germination and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, let's get these reusable grow mediums pulled off so we can take a look at how the germination is going. Now I came out last night and whenever I came out to water these, I did notice that they had slightly dried up. And again, this is one of the challenges with reusable grow mediums is that, uh, or these kind of mesh style grow mediums, is that don't, they don't really retain water. Now, we've had a few questions of like, why do we put um, our trays underneath lights whenever they're obviously not gonna be growing anything? And the main reason is, number one, it looks really pretty, and number two, we use some of that heat off-put by the lights, 
to actually help with the germination process. Also, it's good for the airflow too. That's where we have all our fans. You'll notice over here, I could put them on this shelf, but we don't actually have any fans set up on this shelf yet. So I like to keep them on uh, some shelves that do have some airflow actually going. And that way it really does help out with the germination process and keep that um, mold and stuff like that down. All right, let's take a peek side by side at what's going on. I'm gonna give this a little bit of tap because I noticed yesterday we had some stickers. Yep, we got a few little clingers there. But I am seeing some really solid germination. And it looks like I gave it a good amount of water yesterday because I am noticing, you can see here, you can see it where the, the moisture is still trapped within this mesh medium. And that is really great news. I'm also seeing this on the uh, steel side as well. And I'm doing like a sniff test because sometimes if you add too much water, you'll notice that that water does become stagnant. So let me check my bottom tray and see if we have any kind of pooling water. So we do. What I wanna do now is I don't like when water sits for more than like 24 hours. I'm gonna slightly move my tray askew here. So what I'm gonna do, yeah, both of these have a good amount of moisture. I'm gonna get that moisture out of there just using a simple little hand towel. And there goes our AC kicking off. I'm just gonna get all that moisture out. That way we can have a fresh start today with some new moisture because that can become stagnant and it will produce a slight smell and you just don't want that. So the good news is the moisture does really help out with that germination because it keeps all that humidity in there and it helps those seed holes really start to break out and, and crack open and stuff like that. But again, if you leave stagnant water in a dark space, it's just gonna create issues. So I wanna get that out so I can swap it with some new spray. This is a little bit of hydrogen peroxide with water and we're just gonna give this guy a nice refresher. So now remember the goal here is to get them moist but not so overly wet that we have pooling in the bottom of the tray. All right, that looks pretty good. And this one already had a pretty good amount on the surface but I am noticing on this side, a little less of those seed holes opening. All right, so both of these look great. I'm gonna get the lids put back on. We're gonna get these put back under the weight and we can trap in that humidity. Bam, and we'll get this put back onto the shelf. Now, one way that you can offset the issue of like the stagnant water and stuff like that is you can use different kind of hydroponic systems, such as like aeroponics or stuff like that, where you have like bubblers and stuff. Um, you can basically put these microgreens over a reservoir of water that is constantly flushed in some form or manner, such as like an NFT system, or um, you can use bubblers to create almost like a aeroponics system where it's kind of splashing those little um, bits of water that are always circulating and moving around, always oxygenated, oxygenated. That way um, you don't really get that issue with stagnant water and stuff like that. So there are a lot of ways around uh, kind of dealing with that stagnant water. But for now, I'm just gonna show you guys the bare bones basic way of growing on a reasonable grow medium using a simple spray bottle and uh, some mesh. So I will see you guys tomorrow with another update. All right, y'all, we are on day three for this reusable grow, grow medium trial. So let's get these pulled off the shelf and take a look here. And boom, we have some really solid germination going across both of these trays. Now you can see what looks to be almost like a mold, but if you look really closely, those are actually the root hairs coming out of the main radical. Now the main radical is the first root that comes out of the crop and that is what digs down into that medium. So we're, we, we really want those roots. There's a lot of R's and W's in there. And I've been struggling with those recently. And uh, what, 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 what we want, oh my gosh. What we want is for those roots to dig down into that medium to get latched into that reusable grow medium because that's really gonna help us get uh, growing. <laughs> Sorry, Mandy's laughing so hard at me because I can't talk right now. I've been struggling with my W's and R's. I feel like I need to go back to speech therapy. I never went to speech therapy. Let's get some water. I'm gonna go ahead and get this primed. Bam, I got it primed here. Let's make sure all these stay nice and happy because all those, those root hairs are just hanging out. <laughs> and he keeps laughing at me. <laughs> I can't talk today. <laughs> Mandy's just laughing at me. So one thing I'm noticing uh, right off the bat here with both of these, I'm seeing more on the stainless steel side kind of reaching around, really curling and digging down into that medium. Whereas on this uh, polyethylene side, this mesh plastic, I'm noticing more of them kind of surfing across the <laughs> surface. <laughs> here. <laughs> so anyways, the good news is uh, both of these are rooting very, very well. The radicals have come out and we are getting some solid germination. Now what we need to happen is we need these to start digging through those mediums and get uh, really latched in there so that they can uh, be standing up for the rest of this growth. So let's go ahead and take a look at the roots here. I'm going to kind of flip it up on the side. 
See, we are seeing a lot of these radicals coming through. I am noticing a lot more on the stainless steel side than I am the polyethylene side. So that is good to know. What I'm gonna do, again, add a few more little spritzes. Make sure we have a good amount of moisture. And did I check my bottom? Let's see how much moisture we have hanging out. So we don't have too much water hanging out down here. I feel like that's all right. So we're gonna get these covered back up, put back into germination. And I think in about two more days, these will be ready, but I'll check in with you guys again tomorrow and we'll see how they look. I'll see you guys then. All right, y'all, we are on day four for this reusable grow medium. So let's go ahead and get both of these pulled off and see if these are ready to go into blackout today. Right, so let's get our weight removed, set that off to the side. And same thing, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a tap and a little bit of a tap just to make sure there's no clingers. We got a lot of seed holes stuck on this. That's fine, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe those off into my compost down here. So it's really easy, what I do is I have a little compost down below my table, I take a little towel, and I just wipe all those little seed holes straight into that little compost bin, and I'll just toss that out into my compost to be broken down. And that way these little seed holes aren't sticking around and just kind of sitting in the tray doing nothing. I can get them out of there. Bam. Okay, so our growth on both of these looks great. I will say that I'm seeing what looks like more of these radicals and roots driving down into the stainless steel over the uh, polyethylene style plastic mesh. It looks like on this polyethylene side, a lot of these roots are kind of scraggling across the surface. And actually over here, I am noticing a little bit of mold. So how I know this is mold is it looks very spider webby and it's going across multiple different little crops here. It isn't like this over here, which I can tell is coming straight out of a root hair. You can see how those look like almost like spider web. And that tells me that that is a little bit of mold right there. So I will try to get Let's get something and see if we can figure out which one is the moldy one in here. So I, this whole cluster came out, so I'm just gonna take this whole cluster out of here and just put that into my compost as well. So that looks like, yeah, that looks like that was the source of it. I pick out just that little tiny hair right there from that mold and that looks good. So on our stainless steel side, I'm not seeing any of these that look like they have mold on them. And in fact, these are looking really quite solid over here on the stainless steel side. So let's take a look at their roots real quick. So the roots look great on both of these. I will say that it appears the stainless steel side is doing quite a bit better just by the surface area that these roots are covering compared to these, the polyethylene mesh. So same kind of deal here. I think that these are ready for blackout at this point. Now blackout is uh, it's still part of the germination phase, which means we're still kind of letting these guys get really rooted. But up first, I'm gonna give these a nice mist and I'll show you how we do blackout. So these ones are kind of just kicking up their root straight up into the air. I'm gonna grab, I saw one over here as well. Yeah, this guy. I just don't like those because those are gonna end up just kind of rotting. They're not growing the right direction. So I'll just pull out what I can on that. Oh, come on. There we go. Again, all those are going straight into my compost. Let's do the same thing for the roots. Give these roots a nice light mist and leave some water down in here for them to kind of suck up throughout the day. It's giving these a little bit more since they are a little bit more active than the other side. Cool, we are good. So now to get these into blackout, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take those trays that were oriented straight down, putting pressure on top. I'm just gonna flip them upside down. We're just gonna line it up with the tray right there and just kind of create a little bit of a dome. Now this dome is gonna get trap in the humidity. It's gonna allow these crops to stand up uninhibited and now let's just get it put back onto the shelf. And then I'm gonna come back out tonight. I'm gonna to give them some more water. I'm gonna do the same thing where I miss the top. I'm gonna to miss the roots. And then hopefully tomorrow, these things should be good to pop off the blackout domes and go into the light. So I'll see you guys then. All right, y'all, we are on day five for this reusable grow medium experiment. So let's pull these out of blackout and see how they are looking with their growth. I'm gonna get them sat over here on the mobile cart station. I'm gonna whip this guy around and let's take a peek -see. So today they should be going into the light if they are all standing up. So what do you guys bet? Do you think the plastic one is caught up or do you think that stainless steel mesh is probably still crushing it? Personally, I'm gonna go with the stainless steel mesh because I saw it last night. <laughs> Bam, so here we go with the plastic polyethylene style mesh and the stainless steel. So honestly, at first glance, they're looking a lot better than I thought, especially on this plastic mesh side. I mean, I'm seeing some really good looking growth here. They're all standing up quite nicely. Though kind of looking at the densities between the two, I do feel like the stainless steel mesh has done a little bit better in regards to germination and really getting itself locked and ready to go. But overall, I mean, check out that mesh. It has caught up, especially with all those roots kind of growing vertical as they have across all this surface. 
It's done a great job really getting in here. Oh, wow. We have a big old spot of mold over here. Like, big old, big old spot of mold. That's some nasty looking. Let me get my finger out of there so we can get it focused. So, that is problematic. And really good to know. Looking at the stainless steel mesh, I, I don't see any of that. I'm not seeing a single spot of mold. But even here at the back of the tray, I am seeing a little bit more mold on uh, this plastic mesh side. So that is interesting. Very, very interesting. So let me find my tweezers. I need some tweezers, people. Oh, they're stuck on my ma stainless steel little magnet over there, Mandy. Oh, that's where I put them. Fam, thank you. I knew I put them somewhere and I couldn't remember where. Thank you, Mandy. So I'm gonna flip this like this and let's kind of dig in here and see what is causing our mold. I got my science jacket on, so it's time to do some science. All right, so opening this up, let's see if we can find this source here. I'm just gonna kind of start grabbing and let's take a look. Ooh, that looks gross. All right, let's get that out of there. Oh man, this is looking kind of gnarly right here. So. Probably this is caused by um, anytime something kind of dies on the surface. Oh man, there's a lot of that. You can see what it's doing to the roots right here too. See how it's just killing all of that off. Let's take a look at those the, uh, the roots underneath. Oh yeah, we've got a little bit of mold happening underneath here. So that's just what happens whenever you don't have um, things germinating well on the surface. They'll start to die off and then nature takes over. I mean, mold is a natural part of this process. It's going to begin breaking it down. Really, it's just kind of doing its job here, kind of taking care of all this and making sure it goes back the way it's supposed to go back. But man, that is, that is a good amount of mold there. So since we have a good amount of mold, I'm going to switch up. Oh, I even got it over here. Check this out. So you can see how this mold is all just spreading out of those little seed holes right there. Those are just ungerminated uh, seeds that have just begun to mold on that surface of that plastic mesh. Ew, so gross. So one thing you could do with reusable grow mediums is you can actually spray the mediums and you can rinse them off so that uh, that way you'll knock off all the debris and anything that hasn't really germinated into it, you just kind of rinse it off here. So we could do that. And Mandy, did you have something to say? I just wanted to get a picture of you. You look really cool right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy thinks I look really cool right now. Here, take a picture. You just click the little button. All right, so we had to pause for a photography shoot right there. Okay, let's do something. Let's do something, let's do something, let's do something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to my sink station and we will rinse this out. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the bottom tray. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna take this. And now what I fear is gonna happen most likely is we're gonna end up knocking a lot of these guys over. So that's gonna be the downside of this, but the good news is we can knock off some of that debris that just hasn't hung on. So I'm gonna kinda of put this at an angle here. First of all, I'm just gonna kinda of rinse these roots out, hit it from the back, and see if anything kinda of falls out of the front side there. And now we're gonna, oh yeah, see, we're gonna knock them over. See, I don't wanna really do this. And this is why you want a good reusable grow medium because it's just more challenging if it doesn't really work the way you want it to. Yeah, see, we're gonna end up knocking all these over. Well, let's just go, let's just go for it. You know what, let's go. Let's go. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of rinse these at a downward angle here. We'll knock out anything that hasn't really grabbed on well, that isn't germinating well, and all of that will get rinsed out and knocked down. You can see how much is just falling down into the bottom of this little sink area. We just want all that to go. Anything that's not hanging on, anything that's dying, any mold, anything like that, let's just get it nice and rinsed out. I'm gonna kind of reverse it here since this tray is so. Huh. See, so yeah, we can make it stand. Up again. We can make it stand up. All right, we're gonna reverse the direction, and kind of go against it, and see if we can get anything else out. And I'll kind of stand them back up again. So I'm using my flat sprayer here, something that's powerful but not so powerful that I'm gonna end up really pulling out the good things. All right, so you can't really do this with soils, obviously. You end up knocking all your soil out, and a lot of these guys get rooted down into the soils. So this isn't something you could really do with that, but this is one of the benefits of using something like a reusable grow medium. Now, reusable grow mediums have actually been used for a long time. In fact, 
Uh, some of the earliest aeroponics systems were created using microgreens. They were some of the first people to help NASA out back in like the 1999s, early 2000s, um, developing uh, reasonable grow mediums and stuff like that for um, systems to, to grow, you know, in space and stuff like that. So that's just something that's just really cool. And, you know, some people are like, oh, this has only been around for a little bit. But no, the truth is it's been around for quite a while. And I'm sure if we dug even further, you'd find people back further in history that have done stuff similar as well. So I've kind of rinsed this out as best as I can. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of try to tap this and really get these guys to I'm gonna shake anything else. Yeah, get anybody else that just doesn't really belong. All right, so we probably lost a good few a few good ones, but at the same time, we've got a lot of that nastiness out of this tray. And what I'm gonna do also is I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse this, this tray here that had some mold sitting on it. All right, so I will get it put back on. Bam, and they look so unhappy now. <laughs> All right, so the good news is we've got a lot of that mold out. I'm not seeing any more of it on the tray, but we have kind of sacrificed uh, these guys standing up and looking all pretty. So just to make this test even, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the stainless steel. So again, I'm not really seeing any issues with it, but let's get it taken over there. We'll rinse it out. We'll knock them over and let's see what happens with the stainless steel one. I do think that these are rooted a little bit better, so we shouldn't see as much falling out, but you can see a few of these guys kind of on the side here. I bet we're going to knock some of these out, especially these up here that haven't really had a chance uh, to grab on that well. All right, let's give it a nice rinse. You can see how much stronger these already are. They're popping back up in place, looking real good. All right, let's reverse it. Reverse, reverse. Name that song. All right, go in the opposite direction. I hear that pump working hard to get that last little bit of water out of our reservoir there. I feel like this one did a lot better than the other tray, so I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. Just give it a little shake, 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 shake. Get everything to stand back up. And then let's rinse out this bottom tray. Keep this test as even as possible. Bam. All right, we got that rinsed out. So you can see how much stuff we knocked out right here in the sink. All this just kind of ungerminated, um, not really well germinated, I guess you could also say seeds and stuff like that so it's good to get all those out Boop. these guys look a little unhappy right now because we just put them through like the super water park experience uh, i will say that the stainless steel did hold up a little bit better in my opinion than the uh polyethylene sheet here so i did see you know these guys are standing up a little bit better and i think that they will pop up a little bit quicker so these have these have grown to the right height in my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce these into the light. So let's go ahead and put these under our Barina Blurple LEDs right here. Now these are T8 lights, and these little lights right here do a great job. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of the Blurple because I feel like they are a little harsh on the eyes, especially when you're trying to figure out what's going on with the crop. You know, what does the health of the crop look like, and then try to trying to inspect them. It is um, pretty. <laughs> hard to figure out what your color is, especially if you have something like purple kurabi uh, or rambo radish or something like that in the purple range, it just, it starts to look very muted across the whole tray and you can't really see the health of the crop. So I'm gonna get these put on the shelf. I'm gonna slide them over here because I'm actually gonna start a light test uh, comparing these blue lights to these blurples today. But I need to get some water added to the bottom of these. Since we have all the roots in the bottom, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bottom water this tray. Now to do that, I'm just gonna simply get some pH balance uh, regular filtered tap water here. I'm gonna put about, uh, I think that was about two cups of water. And I just want enough, like I can't see the water coming through the surface, but I do know that these roots are sitting in that water. So that is exactly what I want. Bam, so I will see you guys tomorrow once these have had a chance to kind of perk up. And I think we'll see some really cool color changing on this. And uh, tomorrow we should see a lot more green and whatever color actually comes out in this crop. I forget which one we had. It's Long oh, Scarlet Cincinnati. So pink like pink, light pinkish color. Okay, so this will be like a light pink color. Pink and green. Pink and green. All right, guys, so I'll see you tomorrow for another update. All right, these reusable grow mediums have now been under the light for a full 24 hours. So let's go ahead and get these pulled off the shelf, see how they have recovered from that straight smackdown with the water yesterday. So both of these are looking really solid. I will say, though, that it appears that our stainless steel mesh is still doing a better job of perking up uh, quite nicely. 
And I mean, overall, I'm very happy with the growth on all of these. We're starting to get some really nice coloration in the stems of these. So I know my radish are looking nice and healthy. My cotyledons are beginning to open up. And overall, I mean, most of this has stood up really quite nice and tall. So that's really exciting news. Uh, this plastic one, I'm still a little iffy with. I mean, you can just kind of tell how it seems like they've struggled just a little bit more uh, getting situated in that mesh than they have uh, with the stainless steel side. If you come here and look really, really close, I mean, it's quite close, but this is actually a little bit tighter of a mesh um, on the plastic side than it is on the stainless steel side. I mean, it's very negligible, but it's still uh, just a pinch tighter. So I wonder if that's part of the reason why they're kind of struggling over there. And let's go ahead and keep on taking a look here. All right, so on the stainless steel side and on the mesh side, I am seeing some really happy growth on both of these, really. I'm seeing some nice healthy white roots. I'm seeing they're getting really nice and long. They're beginning to get situated. Uh, I do have a little bit of water left over and I'm getting a slight stagnant smell from it. So I'm gonna roll this over to my sink. I'm gonna dump out that water because I did slightly over water and we'll start with a fresh batch of water today. So again, this is another process where if we wanted to, we could just go ahead and um, spray out this whole tray again. I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna knock over the crop and uh, we'd have to you know, wait for them to kind of perk back up again. They would be a little bit stronger today since they have been in the light for a day. You can see how much water just came out of that one. That was quite a bit. But um, I'm not gonna do that again. I think that the water does feel pretty fine. We just need to refresh it a little bit. All right, so we got the old water out. Let's wheel it back over and let's get some new water added back into here. Now they have no medium whatsoever. So if the water goes away, they are just gonna immediately begin to kind of dry out and there's not a whole lot of um, water mass in these stems yet to kind of retain them for an extended period of time. So that's it for right now. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it back onto the shelf. Let me scoot this away so I don't have to do that so awkwardly. Bam. Okay, so these are now back both underneath the lights. Now I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna come back out tonight. I'm gonna water it, same kind of deal. If I got too much water left over and it's got a slight smell to it, I will dump that out and start with a fresh batch. But I think about the two cup mark now should be good. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for another update. What's up everyone? We are on day nine of this reusable grow medium for this long scarlet Cincinnati radish reusable grow medium trial. So what I wanted to see is how these two different mediums would compare in their growth. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pulled out of the blurple lights because these guys are looking like they are ready for harvest. Over here on this tray, we have our plastic style polyethylene uh, mesh. And over on this side here, we have our stainless steel 304 grade um, mesh. Now, the growth between these two at first glance, I am noticing quite a bit more dimpling on the um, polyethylene side. And I believe that was caused by that weird germination we had in the beginning. It was a little slow, it was a little fast in some areas, but it seems like it's mostly balanced out. I mean, we do have a mostly even canopy here, even though there is a little bit of like higher growth, shorter growth, higher growth. It's all within like the same probably inch or so. So I am happy with the growth here and we are beginning to see true leaf um, on some of these uh, developing watch. Who has one that has none, of course. Well, there was one here in the back anyway. This one, this one had a true leaf. That's what I was trying to show you. So we, we are having some true leaf developing here which means that uh, it is time to harvest this. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at some of these side by side. So I'm gonna pull out, here's one from the polyethylene mesh. Let me find another one over here with a similar size true leaf. This right here from the stainless steel side. Let's give it a nice little tug and pull ski here. So looking at the product side by side, I am noticing a little bit of a pink happening on the polyethylene side compared to the stainless steel side. And that could have been like a stress response from that weird germination that we did get um, in the beginning where it was like a little slow, a little fast. But I am also seeing some, if I pulled out a different one on the stainless steel side here, we are seeing a little bit of that pink down in the stem. So it does appear that some have grown quite well. And actually you guys can appreciate how white and nice that root structure is looking there. That is a very healthy looking root structure from this uh, radish here on the 304 side. Let's go ahead and take a look at the roots. See how that's looking. Cause I noticed whenever I bottom water these, they were looking super healthy over the past few days. So let's see how it looks today. So I am seeing some really, really happy looking root structures here. Uh, it looks like both sides have grown really quite well, though I am noticing a bit denser of a root structure on the stainless steel side. Stainless steel? Stainless steel side. So I think that better germination did account for the uh, stronger root structure because these had a little bit more time to get established versus this side over here on the polyethylene side. 
appears like it had to uh, take a little bit longer to get the germination process really kind of going, get those roots dug in and get growing. So overall, I'm very happy with the growth on both of these trays. I do think that we could have upped our density slightly, um, especially right here on the edges of the trays. I'm noticing a pretty significant amount of space that we could have utilized. But overall, this does look like a very healthy, healthy harvest for both of these trays. I'm going to go ahead and get to harvesting these trays and we'll compare their harvest weights and I can talk about what it's actually like to harvest this. And let's just start off here with uh, the polyethylene. I'm going to scoot this uh, stainless steel mesh out of the way. So let me get this turned to the side and I'm going to go get go ahead and get to harvesting. Now, let's see as I kind of tug on this, it does maintain its uh, root structure really quite well. Sometimes what happen is if you go with these root, if you grow with the reusable grow mediums, as you kind of tug on it, uh, sometimes they could just like slip out really easily, but it does seem like it's rooted really quite well. So I'm harvesting just above the root structures there, uh, basically right uh, at the last little quarter inch of the stem. And I am seeing over here on this side, some of these like slow germinating on the polyethylene side that just don't look so healthy down lower in the canopy. But overall, the product does seem to be uh, really quite healthy for the most part. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this put in here and let's see what kind of harvest weight we can get from this tray. So this is something that you'll see on radish if they struggle to germinate. Uh, sometimes uh, this little pathogen kind of happened in here up in the uh, cotyledon where it's just kind of dying off a little bit. That one I'm gonna set aside. That doesn't look too healthy. I don't want that in my harvested product there. Okay, so I'm getting the last few little stragglers here and it looks like our harvest weight is at 187 grams for the polyethylene style uh, mesh side. I'm kind of curious here. I'm just gonna kind of pull this up and see if it comes out a nice, yeah, so it comes out in a nice uh, little blanket here, which will make this really quite easy to um, clean off. There's a, a, quite a few different ways that you can clean this off. Uh, I've seen people use their fingernails. I actually have like a little kitchen scraper that I use. It's a little plastic scraper uh, that really works quite well to just kind of get all these roots off. And as soon as you get the roots off, uh, the rest of the plant does fall off. Yeah, see, I don't like using my fingers. It's a little, it's a little messy. All right, let me go wash my hands real quick. And then I'm gonna go ahead and harvest a second tray and we'll see how it compares against the 187 grams of the first tray. Whoop. Okay, getting the last few little stragglers here. And we are at 199 grams for the stainless steel side. Now this is probably attributed to the better germination rate and really just that, uh, what was it like 17 extra grams? Or what was it, 187? 12, 12 grams then? But overall the product in my opinion did look a lot healthier and happier on the stainless steel side. And I noticed that the germination process was a lot easier on the stainless steel side. So I really personally enjoyed the stainless steel side. And also for scraping and getting the, uh, the roots and everything off of it. I prefer the stainless steel over the plastic because uh, this does have a bit more um, grab to it. And it's easier, in my opinion, to take something and slide these roots off versus that plastic mat, the plastic, which just kind of flops wherever you want it to flop. Um, again, that's personal preference. Some people like to use the plastic because they can put it over things and you know you can cut it and harvest it like that. But I prefer, so far, the stainless steel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do just a little bit of a taste test. I'm gonna take some from the top because that was my uh, stainless steel side. See how it tastes. And I'm gonna get some from the bottom. Okay, so it's got eating radish straight. <laughs> it's like one of the ones that I don't love taste testing because it can be very intense, just pure radish. Um, great flavor. It was very radishy. Uh, it has a nice mild spice on the back of the tongue to it. Overall, I really do enjoy the flavor of that. Cleanse the palate. So intense. So same thing as the first group, very radishy. I felt like there was a little bit more crunch to the stainless steel side, but overall, it was, I would say there would be no way I could differentiate really between the two if we had a side-by-side -side taste test on those. So great flavor on both groups. Let me rinse my mouth so I can finish talking. So the winner in overall harvest weight was the stainless steel side. Personally, I found the grow process to be easier on the stainless steel side. Uh, the flavors were negligible. I mean, the, the flavor differences, I mean, uh, so I think that there's nothing really there to be talked about. Uh, the appearance seemed to be pretty similar on both. There's some that had no pink and some that had a lot of pink in the base of the stem. So I think it really just boils down to ease of use and germination. And personally, I did prefer the stainless steel side's germination more than the polyethylene style mesh. 
So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a lot more tests uh, with the stainless steel side. And I'll probably find uh, a few more of these plastic meshes and we'll just kind of play with them a little bit more. Uh, see if we can get some better grows out of them. And uh, same thing with the stainless steel. I'm going to be playing with it, seeing uh, different techniques. There's something I kind of want to do, which is like, I'm going to call it the aeroponics challenge, which was the, uh, what they created back for NASA in the, back in the day. And it's basically like a plastic grid system with a very thin uh, cloth sheet over it uh, that they grow uh, microgreens on. And they were doing that back in like 98 or something. So I'd like to try that method. And they were just misting the roots um, with an aeroponic spray, which is just really fine air, uh, no, not air particles, really fine water particles misted into the air and onto the roots. So uh, essentially what they did is they had systems that were, if I can get this uh, lifted, is they had almost a triangle based system, kind of like this. And then they had a single watering system down here that would mist up into these uh, root structures and then both uh, sides of the microgreens would grow out. I thought it was a super cool method. And again, it was like back in 98 and the fact that they were doing this back then, just playing around with all these fun methods. I wanna start recreating some of those just to see how they uh, pan out and play out and see if I like it. And, oh, I never talked about that, the benefits of this. So, so what are the benefits of growing on this over using soils? Cost is the main thing. So over time, you're gonna see your cost go down for your grows because you only have the upfront cost of buying this stuff one time. Uh, I don't know the cost on this plastic sheet. Most plastic sheets like this and these meshes are inc incredibly cheap, like really, really cheap. You can jump on Alibaba or AliExpress or you can find this around a lot of different stores, a, a similar type of plastic polyethylene or polypropylene mesh for like under a dollar up to I would say maximum like five bucks. Um, and then as for the stainless steel side, it does get a little bit more expensive. The ones that I bought off of Amazon were, uh, it was $14 for two of these sheets and I can only cut it into two full sheets. So it's about $7 per sheet for me to have this. Now, what happens when you're going with soils is you're spending about a dollar per tray um, in soil or medium to grow. And actually a lot of the, the different uh, grow mediums such as hemp or burlap, are around that 80 cents to about a buck 30. Uh, some are gonna about $2, $2, not $200, $2 per um, sheet. So you are gonna see cost savings after say seven grows. Then you're no longer gonna be spending that money on soils. And this thing is actually gonna be producing more profit for you or you're just gonna have to not spend that money uh, if you are a home grower or something like that to, to be buying that soil all the time. And honestly, it reduces kind of the dependence of having to have some external source of soil or grow medium. If you just got the stainless steel mesh, you just got to focus on this, keep it clean, make sure it stays in good condition, sanitize it and stuff like that. And you can use it over and over and over and over and over and over, especially with the stainless steel. This thing's probably gonna last like 10 years as long as we can take good care of it. So that is really it for this test. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna be doing a lot more experiments with this. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. If you guys are interested, we have an ebook where we talk about all kinds of different growing methods, uh, how we grow microgreens, what it's like growing in the commercial option, how to grow at home in many different ways, and so many other things. Check out that ebook. We made it under $16 to try to bring as much value as we could to you guys. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms. And our website is www.onthegrow.net. Uh, we also have our book on Amazon Kindle, if you guys are curious about that. Becoming a Microgreen Master is the name of it. Thank you so much, have a great day, and keep on believing.